Hi everyone. Today we are starting with a new story that is the fifth story in your textbook and the name of the story is Indigo and it is written by Lewis Fisher. So indigo is basically a crop that gives us a blue color. You know, a crop that gives us a blue color, a very dark blue color is indigo. And this chapter, this story is based on that incident. Now, if we move to history, so there is one specific incident about how peasants in India were forced by the Britishers to grow and to cultivate indigo. And why, you know, the peasants resisted, what were the problems that they had to face and how eventually Mahatma Gandhi came into picture. How he led a successful movement, how he actually organized a successful Satyagraha movement, especially for the uh, peasants of Champaran, which is in Bihar, who were, you know, forced to cultivate this indigo. So this story is about the same incident about how Mahatma Gandhi as a leader, he actually come, came forward, how he actually helped the peasants of uh, Champaran to actually resist their demands where they were not ready to grow indigo and how Britishers were forcing them to do so. So how Mahatma Gandhi actually helped the peasants of Champaran. This story is based on that. So let's start, but before that, let's have a brief intro about the author. Let's know a little about our author, which is Lewis Fisher. So, Lewis Fisher was born in Philadelphia. He served as a volunteer in the British Army between 1918 and 1920. Fisher made a career as a journalist and wrote for the New York Times, the Saturday Review, and for European and Asian publications. He was also a member of the faculty at Princeton University. The following is an excerpt from his book, The Life of Mahatma Gandhi. So he's written one book, the name of that book is The Life of Mahatma Gandhi. And this story is just an extract, just a little part. Therefore, we are calling it an excerpt from the main book that is The Life of Mahatma Gandhi. The book has been reviewed as one of the best books ever written on Gandhi by Times Educational Supplement. So, we know that he was and uh, he was serving as a soldier. He was there in the British Army between 1918 and 1920. And maybe that was also a time when Mahatma Gandhi was there in India. He was organizing the movement. He was leading the national, uh, you know, the freedom fight. And how, you know, uh, maybe he had his interaction with uh, Louis Fisher, which we can say is why he had written a book, The Life of Mahatma Gandhi. And in this story, we are going to uh, understand, we are going to read about one such incident regarding Mahatma Gandhi. That was the Champaran issue, where the peasants of Champaran, which is in Bihar, were forced to cultivate indigo. So let's start. When I first visited Gandhi in 1942 at his ashram in Sevagram in central India, he said, I will tell you how it happened that I decided to urge the departure of the British. It was in 1917. So now here, I is the author. That is Lewis Fisher. This is the author, Lewis Fisher. And he visited Mahatma Gandhi in 1942 in his ashram, which is in Sevagram in central India. That is in Gujarat. Okay. And there he said that Mahatma Gandhi told him that, no, today I will tell you that how this entire thing happened. How did this, uh, you know, uh, freedom struggle happen? And then he said that I urged the departure of the British and this happened in 1917. He had gone to the December 1916 annual convention of the Indian National Congress Party in Lucknow. There were 2,301 delegates and many visitors. During the proceedings, Gandhi recounted, a peasant came up to me looking like any other peasant in India, poor and emaciated and said, I am Rajkumar Shukla. So here Gandhiji is narrating that incident where he said that this was one of the incidents because of which 
you know, I felt I urged the departure of the Britishers from our country and that happened in 1917. So what happened in 1917? So Mahatma Gandhi said that in December 1916, he had gone to Lucknow to attend the annual convention. Annual convention means the yearly meeting. Convention is a meeting. So he is gone to attend the yearly meeting of the INC, that is the Indian National Congress Party in Lucknow. And there he is saying that, you know, there were some 2,301 delegates, that is representatives. There were some 2,301 representatives and many visitors were there. Now, during the proceedings, Mahatma Gandhi said that there were many Indian peasants that came there and every peasant looked the same. That is, they were poor, they were emancipated, you know, uh, sorry, they were poor, they were very poor. Uh, and then he said that one out of them had introduced himself to me and he said that my name is Rajkumar Shukla. I am from Champaran and I want you to come to my district. Gandhi had never heard of the place. It was in the foothills of the towering Himalayas near the kingdom of Nepal. Under an ancient arrangement, the Champaran peasants were sharecroppers. Rajkumar Shukla was one of them. He was illiterate but resolute. He had come to the Congress session to complain about the injustice of the landlord system in Bihar and somebody had probably said, speak to Gandhi. So here, this, here the I is this peasant Rajkumar Shukla and he said that, you know, he's introducing himself to Mahatma Gandhi and he's saying that I am from Champaran and Champaran is a place in Bihar. So Champaran is a place in Bihar, which is, and how it is being described that, uh, you know, uh, it is in the foothills of the towering Himalayas near the kingdom of Nepal. So this person is introducing himself, saying that I am a peasant from Champaran, which is a place in Bihar. And he's requesting Mahatma Gandhi to please visit, that please come and visit my place, that is Champaran. Now Mahatma Gandhi feels, you know, Mahatma Gandhi has never heard of this place ever before. Okay, but now what is the condition here of these poor peasants of Champaran? So it was described that since old time, ancient arrangements mean, since old time, these peasants here were sharecroppers, which means they were very poor peasants and, uh, you know, they even had to give a certain part of the crop that they grow as rent. That's what we call as a sharecropper. Sharing, that is giving a certain part of their crops that they grow as rent. So he's saying that, you know, we belong to a group of sharecroppers. We have to give certain part of the crop as rent and we are extremely poor. And Rajkumar Shukla says that we are one of them. But Rajkumar Shukla was illiterate, means he was uneducated. But resolute, means but he was determined. Even though he was not educated, but he was determined. And sharecroppers, poor peasants, who had to give a part of their crops as rent. This is the sharecroppers. So here this person from Champaran is introducing and he's asking Mahatma Gandhi to visit Champaran. But Mahatma Gandhi has never heard of this place. And here he's saying that, you know, I belong to the group of sharecroppers and uh, he seemed to be very uneducated, but still he was very, very determined. Now, he had come to this Congress meeting, just like many others. He was there with his problem. He wanted to complain about the injustice of the landlord system, which was there in Bihar. And someone in the meeting had told him that, okay, if you want to complain about it, you want to speak something related to it, please go and speak to Mahatma Gandhi. So, Gandhi told Shukla, he had an appointment in 
Kuanpur and was also committed to go to other parts of India. Shukla accompanied him everywhere. Then Gandhi returned to his ashram near Ahmedabad. Shukla followed him to the ashram. So when this man Rajkumar Shukla, you know, he actually went and had a word with Mahatma Gandhi. He's asking him to come to his place. He's, come, he's putting forward his concern. So Mahatma Gandhi told him that, you know, I already have prior uh, commitments. That is, I already have to go few places. It is already decided. And then he's also saying that I also have an appointment in Kuanpur. Kuanpur is what? Is actually Kanpur. This is how the Britishers used to call it, Kuanpur. So he's saying that, you know, I have to go to different places. I already have meetings there. So this man, uh, Rajkumar Shukla, is so determined that he said that, fine, I am going to accompany you. Means, I am going to come along with you to all the places. And he actually traveled with Mahatma Gandhi to all the places. And they together reached his ashram near Ahmedabad. For weeks, he never left Gandhi's side. Fix a date, he begged. Impressed by the sharecropper's tenacity and story, Gandhi said, I have to be in Calcutta on such and such a date. Come and meet me and take me from there. So here, he was there with Mahatma Gandhi for so many days. And then he finally asked, uh, told Mahatma Gandhi, I am begging you, I am requesting you, that please fix a date. And then Mahatma Gandhi was very much impressed by his determination, by his strong will and by his tenacity, that is uh, his determination, yes, his willpower. And he's saying that, okay, uh, he tells him that, you know, uh, he told him that, you know, I have to be in Calcutta on some specific date. So please come and meet me there and we'll go together. So months passed. Shukla was sitting on his haunches at the appointed spot in Calcutta when Gandhi arrived. He waited till Gandhi was free. So Shukla, he actually went to uh, that place where it was decided that, okay, you meet me on this specific date at this place in Calcutta. So this man, he went there and he actually was sitting in haunches, that is sitting on his thighs. Sitting on his thighs. And then he was sitting like that till the time Mahatma Gandhi got free. And then the two of them boarded a train for the city of Patna in Bihar. There Shukla led him to the house of a lawyer named Rajendra Prasad, who later became the president of the Congress Party and of India. So now after Mahatma Gandhi met him in, at Cal, in Calcutta, they both actually took a train and they came to Patna, which is again in Bihar. And there they went to a lawyer's house who was none other than the first president of our country, that is Rajendra Prasad. Rajendra Prasad was out of town, but the servants knew Shukla as a poor yeoman who pestered their master to help the indigo sharecroppers. So they let him stay on the grounds with his companion, Gandhi, whom they took to be another peasant. But Gandhi was not permitted to draw water from the well, lest some drops from his bucket pollute the entire source. How did they know that he was not an untouchable? So here, uh, Shukla, you know, he had actually met Rajendra Prasad a number of times because he was a lawyer. So probably, you know, before going and meeting Mahatma Gandhi, Shukla had met Rajendra Prasad a couple of times uh, to help him out and help the peasants of Champaran out of the situation of indigo, the indigo problem that they were facing. So when this time, you know, uh, Shukla came to Rajendra Prasad's house along with Mahatma Gandhi. The servants actually came to know him because the servants were able to recognize him easily because they have seen him coming to uh, their master, that is Rajendra Prasad, so many times, pestering him. Pestering means that being after him to help him out of this uh, indigo issue. But today, on that very day, when uh, Mahatma Gandhi and Shukla went to Rajendra Prasad house, he was not there. He was not even in town. So the servants allowed both of them to stay there. That, okay, you stay here. But, you know, here the description is that these peasant, uh, sorry, these servants of Rajendra Prasad house, they also thought that Mahatma Gandhi is also another peasant. So looking at his physical appearance, he seemed to be like another peasant, just like Shukla. But Gandhi and other people, uh, Gandhi and Shukla, they were not allowed to take the water out of the well. 
Why? Because at that time, untouchability was a very major issue. And these servants, obviously, they thought that he is a peasant and they didn't know which caste they, it, he belonged to. So what if, you know, he's an untouchable and he takes the water out of the well and some water drops off again and pollutes, makes the entire well dirty. So, therefore, Gandhi was also not allowed to draw water from the well. Gandhi decided to go first to Muzaffarpur, which was en route to Champaran to obtain more complete information about the conditions than Shukla was capable of imparting. So now Mahatma Gandhi obviously he decided that okay he has to visit Champaran. So he first had to go to Muzaffarpur which was in route. In route means on his way. In route means on his way to Champaran. He actually first visited Muzaffarpur because he wanted to gather complete information about this entire issue that was going on in Champaran because Shukla was only able to you know, tell him something. So he wanted to gather the complete information, the bigger picture before doing something. He accordingly sent a telegram to Professor J.B. Kriplani of the Arts College in Muzaffarpur whom he had seen at the Tagore's Shanti Niketan School. The train arrived at midnight 15th April 1917. Kriplani was waiting at the station with a large body of students. Gandhi stayed there for two days in the home of Professor Malkani, a teacher in a government school. So now, in order to get more information about the Champaran issue, about sorry, about the incident, about the problem that was being faced by the peasants in Champaran, he first went, he first actually wanted to visit Muzaffarpur. And there he knew, knew a person who was Professor J.B. Kriplani, whom he had met, whom he had seen at Tagore's Shanti Niketan school. So he sent him a message, that is through telegram, he sent him a message about his arrival. And therefore, when he arrived on 15th April 1917, the Professor Kriplani was already waiting there for him at the station along with few other students. So Mahatma Gandhi stayed at Muzaffarpur for two days. And he was staying at Professor Malkani's house. Now, who was Professor Malkani? He was a teacher in the government school. Now, it was an extraordinary thing in those days, Gandhi commented, for a government professor to harbor a man like me. In smaller localities, the Indians were afraid to show sympathy for advocates of home rule. So now, Mahatma Gandhi uh, is saying that, you know, Professor Malkani was a teacher of the government school and I stayed at his place for two days and he's, he's saying that you know this was an extraordinary thing that happened uh, at that time because during those days a, you know a teacher of a government school would rather not entertain a person like me and this man this prof uh, teacher of the government school professor Malkani he actually allowed me to be there at his house for two days and why he's saying so because he feels that in smaller localities a person who is actually, you know, uh, pro uh, propagating for, advocating, matlab, he's asking for, he's propagating for home rule. Uh, such persons were not entertained. But Professor Malkani actually uh, showed him that sympathy. He actually entertained him, allowed him to stay at his place. Yes. The news of Gandhi's advent and of the nature of his mission spread quickly through Muzaffarpur and to Champaran. Sharecroppers from Champaran began arriving on foot and by conveyance to see their champion. Muzaffarpur lawyers called on Gandhi to brief him. They frequently represented present groups in court. They told him about their cases and reported the size of their fee. So what happened? The news that yes, Gandhi, the news of Gandhi's advent, that is Gandhi is coming to their place and is maybe he's going to help them. He's going to have a new mission, a new a movement that is going to help the peasants of Champaran. So this news started spreading in Muzaffar Nagar. And sorry, this uh, news started spreading in Muzaffarpur and Champaran. And finally, the sharecroppers, these peasants, they became really happy and they were all ready, even on their foot. And many of them even came using some transport, transport, conveyances, transport, rather transportation. 
so they all came uh, either they traveled on their own foot or you know they took some transportation but they all came to see their champion that is their leader mahatma gandhi and muzaffarpur jo lawyers the the lawyers of muzaffarpur they called gandhi to brief him about the situation about the problems and then they frequently represented so the lawyers of muzaffarpur they represented the peasants the their problems their grievances and told them uh, told mahatma gandhi briefed mahatma gandhi about the problems that these peasants in champaran were facing gandhi shouted the lawyers for collecting big fee from the share croppers he said i have come to the conclusion that we should stop going to law courts taking such cases to the courts does little good where the peasants are so crushed and fear stricken law courts are useless the real relief for them is to be free from fear so here when different lawyers or group of lawyers from muzaffarpur they actually came and you know presented the case of different peasant group so what were they doing they were presenting or representing one of the other peasants group so and you know they were briefing mahatma gandhi about the problem about the case of individual peasant group but here mahatma gandhi you know actually uh, is complaining about the lawyers that you know these lawyers who are presenting or representing the peasants they are charging so much of money right they are taking the case to the court and they are charging so much money which if we see is not really affordable for the peasants they already are being crushed they do not really have good wages their condition is not good they are already uh, crushed in the sense their financial state uh, the, their, their financial position is not good and they are always in fear so what so cases of law or law courts are useless they going to these courts coming regularly to courts and you know speaking would never happen because they are not in that condition they are full of fear so here mahatma gandhi is saying that the real relief will come to them if they are free from this inner fear so most of the arable land in the champaran district was divided into large estates owned by englishmen and worked by indian tenants the chief commercial crop was indigo the landlords had compelled all the tenants to plant 320th or 15% of their holdings with indigo and surrender the entire indigo harvest as rent this was done by long term contract so what was the situation in champaran so champaran had good amount of arable land that is land that is fit for cultivation or fertile land which is used for cultivation so these fertile lands these arable lands they were divided into bigger estates that is bigger plots and each was under one of the other englishman right and those englishmen used to hire or employ the indian tenants the laborers the peasants to work on these uh, on these uh, estates on these bigger plots of land and these peasants were forced that they have to grow the crop the commercial crop that is indigo and what was the condition that if you are growing you are forced compelled means they were forced to grow cult uh, to they were forced to grow indigo and they were being told that 15% of their total land holdings should be cultivated with not, nothing else but the commercial crop that was indigo and these poor tenants poor peasants they had to give in they did not have any other option because they had a long term contract they had probably signed some of the other contract and they could not refuse and according to that contract you know 15% of their total land holding was just devoted to the cultivation of indigo which obviously did not the peasants were not uh, very happy about presently the landlords learned that germany had developed synthetic synthetic indigo they thereupon obtained agreements from the share croppers to pay them compensation for being released from the 15% arrangement so now what happened the landlords you know who were forcing these peasants and who were maintaining the land and forcing the peasants to grow the to grow indigo on their land they got to know that in germany a synthetic indigo was developed what is a synthetic indigo an indigo crop that was made chemically 
केमिकली मेड इंडिगो ओके सो दे गॉट टू नो दैट इन जर्मनी दिस सिंथेटिक इंडिगो वॉज डेवलप्ड सो वॉट हैपन दे सेट दैट ओके वी आर दे शेयर दैट वी आर गोइंग टू हैव अ न्यू अग्रीमेंट विद द शेयर क्रॉपर्स दैट इज द प्रेजेंट एंड नाउ इट वॉज सेट दैट दे हैव टू पे दम कॉम्पनसेशन फॉर बींग रिलीज फ्रॉम द फिफ्टीन परसेंट अरेंजमेंट विच मीन्स इफ आई एम अ लैंड लॉर्ड एंड यू आर द शेयर क्रॉपर दैट इज द प्रेजेंट हु इज बींग फोर्स टू ग्रो और कल्टिवेट इंडिगो वेन आई लर्न एज अ लैंड लॉर्ड दैट येस दाउ देर इज अ सब्सटीट्यूट सब्सटीट्यूट इन द फॉर्म ऑफ द न्यूली डेवलप्ड सिंथेटिक इंडिगो इन जर्मनी सो आई एम टेलिंग माई पेजेंट्स दैट ओके यू वुड बी फ्री फ्रॉम दिस अग्रीमेंट of you know devoting 15% of your land to the cultivation of indigo you will be free from that okay no one will force you but to come out of this contract to come out of this arrangement you will have to pay a compensation the share cropping arrangement was irksome to the peasants and many signed willingly those who resisted engaged lawyers the landlords hired thugs Meanwhile the information about synthetic indigo reached the illiterate peasants who had signed and they wanted their money back so now what happened that this arrangement you know few people they were very much irritated so few of them became really irritated with this and few of them signed it willingly that okay we are going to pay you a compensation and we will be free from this but many of them who resisted who obviously who did not either want to sign it and who were not even ready to you know give away so they were a little they were resisting they were not trying to do anything and then they engaged lawyers and in return to that the landlords they hired thugs that is cheats and then what happened when the information that yes a synthetic indigo is developed and therefore this idea was being presented this kind of new thing came up so at that time these illiterate that is uneducated peasants who had already signed the agreement willingly they all said that we want our money back now at this point gandhi arrived in champara so while all this was going on at this very point we see the arrival of mahatma gandhi in champara he began by trying to get the facts First he visited the secretary of the British Landlords Association the secretary told him that they could give no information to an outsider Gandhi answered that he was no outsider so when Mahatma Gandhi finally arrived at uh, Champaran he first he obviously got to know about all this but then he wanted some facts so for that he first came to the British Landlords Association to gather some information but there he was told that you know we cannot give you any kind of information because you are an outsider to which mahatma gandhi said that i am not an outsider so next gandhi called on the british official commissioner of the tirhut division in which the champaran district lay so when mahatma gandhi was asked that okay here he was told that you know you are an outsider we cannot provide you with any information so then mahatma gandhi called on to the british official commissioner of which district the tirhut division in which lay the champaran district matlab har ek district mein hum kehte hain ek division mein ek district lay karta hai so jo champaran district hai wo tirhut division mein lay karta tha therefore mahatma gandhi had called on the british official commission of this very division now the commissioner gandhi reports proceeded to bully me and advised me forthwith to leave tirhut so when mahatma gandhi is recalling the incident and he is telling the author that you know when i called up the commissioner of the tirhut division he actually bullied me he actually wanted to suppress me and even advised me that you know you should go away from here gandhi did not leave but gandhi ji did not agree to it he did not give in he said i am not leaving instead he proceeded to motihari the capital of champaran several lawyers accompanied him at the railway station a vast multitude greeted gandhi so instead of listening to the uh, commissioner or instead of getting you know fearful about the commissioner's advice or him bullying the gandhi gandhi decided that no i am not leaving the place i am going to be here so now he became more uh, you know we could say uh, he organized as to what he has to do therefore 
he said that okay he moved to the capital city of champaran which was motihari and there he did not go alone he was accompanied by many lawyers so he went to motihari which was the capital of champaran and along with him there were many lawyers who went with him so at the railway station when he arrived there many people were there to greet him to receive him now he went to a house and using it as headquarters continued his investigations a report came in that a peasant had been maltreated in a nearby village gandhi decided to go and see the next morning he started out on the back of an elephant he had not proceeded far when the police superintendent's messenger overtook him and ordered him to return to town in his carriage so here mahatma gandhi he decided that okay i should go and visit meet that uh, peasant who was mistreated so next day he actually sat on the back of the elephant to meet the peasant now when he was about to reach there was a messenger who actually messenger who and whose messenger was he the police superintendent's messenger came and actually you know uh, crossed mahatma gandhi okay and he stopped him there and he said that you know please go back now gandhi complied the messenger drove gandhi home where he served him with an official notice to quit champaran immediately gandhi signed a receipt for the notice and wrote on it that he would disobey the order so when mahatma gandhi was on his way to meet that peasant so there was a police messenger of the police superintendent there who actually stopped him and asked him to go back so at that time mahatma gandhi complied means he agreed that okay whatever you're telling me i am following you i agree i will listen to what you are saying and when they both reached mahatma gandhi's house which you know he where he was staying he was saying that it was his headquarter so there the official notice was given to him by the messenger and in that official notice it was written that mahatma gandhi must quit champaran means he must go away from champaran he must leave this place but at this point mahatma gandhi signed a receipt on for the notice and he replied back saying that this order i am not going to follow i will disobey in consequence gandhi received a summons to appear in the court the next day all night gandhi remained awake he telegraphed rajendra prasad to come from bihar with influential friends he sent instructions to the ashram he wired a full report to the viceroy so when mahatma gandhi you know he replied for that official notice saying that i am going to disobey the order of uh, where it is being asked uh, where you know where it is ordering me to leave this place so i will not agree to this i will not follow this so as a result of this in consequence means as a result of that mahatma gandhi received a summon where it was said that okay he will have to appear in court because he disagreed or disobeyed an official notice so at that night so when mahatma gandhi was aware that okay he has to appear in court the next day so he remained awake the entire night he could not sleep in fact he sent a message that is telegraphed to rajendra prasad that okay he must come to this place along with his really powerful and influential friends and he not only messaged uh, rajendra prasad about this but he even gave such uh, certain instructions to the people to his followers his disciples in is his ashram and then he even wrote a complete report he actually made a complete report to the viceroy morning found the town of motihari black with peasants they did not know gandhi's record in south africa they had merely heard that a mahatma who wanted to help them was in trouble with the authorities their spontaneous demonstration in thousands around the court house was the beginning of their liberation from fear of the british so mahatma gandhi you know he came to india from south africa there you know he was himself a lawyer and he was a victim of racism so he was waging a fight against this racial discrimination in south africa but the peasants the poor peasants the uneducated illiterate peasants of champaran were unaware about mahatma gandhi's history about what Uh, you know about what he did in south africa 
okay so when in the morning mahatma gandhi was to appear in court these peasants they got to know that yes someone who was there to help him that is their mahatma you know he's they he's being referred to as their mahatma so the peasants who unaware about mahatma gandhi's past in south africa about his deeds in south africa they just gathered in thousands of numbers surrounding the court house why because now they felt that a person who was standing for them yes who was trying to help them out he was in trouble trouble with the authorities so at this point what happened that this situation this incident is seen as their liberation from the fear from british liberation means that now that fear which mahatma gandhi was saying that the real freedom the real relief for these peasants would come once they you know come out of this fear they are free from this fear so that's exactly what mahatma gandhi is saying that you know when they gathered around the court house in thousands of number protesting because i was you know in trouble according to them i was in trouble with the authorities so therefore they protested in thousands of number you know circling and gathering around the court house so this marked their liberation from the fear of british that is their uh, you know that upliftment the fear was now ebbing away was going away and they were rising out of that fear against the britishers the officials felt powerless without gandhi's cooperation he helped them regulate the crowd he was polite and friendly he was giving them concrete proof that their might hitherto dreaded and unquestioned could be challenged by indians the government was baffled the prosecutor requested the judge to postpone the trial apparently the authorities wished to consult their superiors so what happened at this point when mahatma gandhi was inside the court and thousands of farmers were protesting outside the court house so this was not something the officials uh, you know ex- uh, could even imagine that something like this would happen so seeing thousands of peasants protesting they felt as if they were powerless they were not having any power they could not understand what to do and therefore he said that you know mahatma gandhi actually came he tried to speak to the peasants in very polite manner and then this was telling them that yes mahatma gandhi was you know uh, was someone who is helping them who was standing uh, for these peasant and that's when when the officials they felt that they could not do anything about this they felt they were powerless so that's when you know the government was baffled was completely shocked looking at this situation and that's when the prosecutor that is the lawyer you know he said that okay let's postpone he requested the judge that let's postpone this trial and uh, this was may- maybe done because they were not understanding what to do and maybe they wanted to consult their seniors their superiors 